See, the way I am sitting here, so you have to keep it very relaxed. Okay? Okay. The, just now we were talking about, we were talking about the proteins, we talked about the carbohydrates, the requirement of the carbohydrates in chronic liver diseases. Now we want to talk about the requirement of requirement of salt and fluids in case of chronic liver disease. And I have got here with me the final year uh, students, right? They are quite smart students and I am thankful to them for their cooperation and all that. So will you please introduce yourself? Only the loudly, you can speak loudly. Uh, I am Mosin, uh, batch 23 from group H2. Yes. Uh, my name is Mohammed Niza, batch 33 from group H2. Okay, so so you 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 will be telling us something about the about the fluids, isn't it? Yes. So you can you can, you can just tell us what you you want to say. Okay. That how much should be the requirement of fluids? How the fluids should be given in case of chronic liver disease? Yeah, sure. Uh, when we're talking about the fluids, uh, first we need to understand what a fluid. Fluid is just a normal uh, the water we're talking about, where our body is sixty percent of our body is comprises of fluid. So we divide into uh, fourteen liters in the extracellular space and uh, twenty eight liters in the intracellular space. So when we do in a normal person, the fluid requirement. What is, you, what you say? The fluid requirement. Yeah, the fluid. Yeah. The fluid requirement in a normal person is based on the. It's based on the metabolic rate, mm. the body surface area, mm. and also it's based on the weight of the person. If it, this we are talking about the normal person, so a normal person should bring amount of fluid around 2.7 liters to uh, 3.7 liters to 2.7 liters. So this is for a normal person. But when you're talking about chronic liver disease, this kind of patient actually uh, they have uh, they have to take low intakes of fluid. This is because of the protein uh, depletion due to the liver. Actually, it it um, it synthesizes the protein called the albumin. So, yes. Which so, so so you mean to say that hypoalbumin albumin yeah. we are going yes. right, and there is a fluid is coming yes. into the interstitial spaces and leading into yeah. the the leading extravasation of the fluid into yes. the interstitial, giving rise to edema and anus yeah. uh, Yes. And also, not also because of the decrease in the oncotic pressure, because of the decrease in albumin, but also due to the hepatorenal syndrome. When there is liver dysfunction, there can also be kidney, kidney dysfunction because the most of the fluid excreted by our body is uh, mostly by our kidney, probably 100 and 800 ml. So, if the kidney is shut down, then the most of our fluid can't be excreted, and this will cause the escape of the fluid to the third space, which is the pleuritic uh, or the pericardium. Or also can go to the peritoneum, peritoneum and also it can go to the peripheral like the pedal edema. So if it goes to peritoneum, we call it as ascites. Yes, ascites. Okay. So in a normal person, uh, I mean in a so they will be having the distended belly. So most of the chronic liver diseases they have the distended, distended belly or distended abdomen. That is because of the fluid in the peritoneum. Yes. yes. So, uh, to prevent I just want to add here, you said that the, these patients who got a fluid depletion, they go into hepatorenal, hepatorenal syndrome or they go into renal shutdown. Is there any pathological changes in the liver in such cases? Will there be? So what, what is there that there won't be any pathological changes, right? It is all functional, it is all physiological. The, in pathology, you won't find any lesions won't be there. It is only functional shutdown. You understand my point? So pathologically, you won't find any 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 lesions, any gross lesions in the kidney. Kidney will almost appear normal, but still, the kidney fails. That that has got something to do with the physiology and function function. And uh, we are talking about the fluid in the chronic liver disease, where we normally maintain around 500 to 1,000 ml. But this is not to all chronic liver disease. This is person who have decompensated chronic liver disease, who person who can't compensate the fluid. So in this patient only, we will require them to drink to 500 to 1,000 ml. So, uh, uh, so, so you want me to explain about smoke as well? Or? No, no the, the, you mean to say that you mean to say that. When the patient has got a chronic liver disease, we give 500 ml to 1000 ml. But if patient got anasarca, patient got ascites, patient, the patient is having a dyspnea, the, the, too much of fluid is there, then it has been, it is also recommended that you give less than 800. 
in cases of ascites right and in cases of anasarca you have you don't have to exceed more than more than 8 800 ml you can give less than 800 ml then it further depends upon much severity if there is a total severity total re, 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 shutdown and there is to, the whole body is edematous then you may have to give only 500 ml but otherwise most of the books write less than 800 ml to be given in patients who got who got the edema and anasarca Yes. yes, you can. You can. You can. You want to tell us about the about the salt? How much salt is very very common? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. About the salt. When we are talking about fluid. We need to talk about salt as well because it's something uh, correlates in the body mechanism. For example, if a patient taking lots of salt, it will cause the fluid to retain in the body. For example, a person who is a who is an athlete, we will ask them to drink an isotonic drink to maintain the electrolyte. The end, the electrolyte will cause the body fluid to not to be released by sweat, so the body fluid will be maintained. With this with this concept in your mind, you should understand that salt also have this kind of property. So we should decrease the salt intake in chronic liver disease to prevent the fluid retention, the fluid retention. So uh, when we say salt, we're actually talking about the table salt. We don't have uh, uh, we're talking about sodium chloride, sodium and chloride. But we don't eat sodium chloride just like that. So we're talking about the table salt. So uh, one gram of table salt contain 400 mg of sodium. Okay. So you must have the concept in your mind. One. 400 mg, uh, one gram of table salt. Uh, so in a normal uh, normal person, they will take around 1,500 mg to 2,300 mg of sodium, which is almost three to six gram of table salt. This is normal requirement. So you mean to say that in case of chronic liver disease, the person should take around two to three grams of the salt. Yes. Not more than that. Not more than because that. Because if a person takes more than more than more than three grams, then there are chances of aggravation of the of the fluid overload. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so what kind of diet they have is we have three type of sodium diet: strict sodium diet, low sodium diet, and sodium reduced diet. Strict sodium diet is one gram of table salt. A uh, low sodium diet is three grams of table salt. And sodium reduced diet six grams of table salt. But what we normally use in the house is the low sodium diet, uh, three grams. When we do uh, less uh, take the salt. The strict low sodium diet we can only do in hospital uh, environment. Yes, mm -hmm. hospital environment. It's very difficult. So we, we have come. See, we, we have come to the conclusion here that person who got a liver disease should get only two to three grams of mm -hmm. the salt. Yes. That is the conclusion of what you want to say. Okay. Yes. So, what is what is your part? Uh, my part is that I will be explaining the the, the the food, the fruits, and the and the vegetables that contain our uh, fluids. So we have to like in this condition, in this chronic liver disease. You know that generally Nizar said that we have to limit the amount of fluid intake. So my portion is that in everyday life during from morning until night we will be consuming we will be consuming foods you know uh, we will be drinking just to, just to interrupt you you need to just just remain focused on the meat right yeah. 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 so um, so I'm saying here that the fruits yeah. you can find in the, in the fruits in the vegetables and also in the drinks so the examples of fruits that contain a lot of water is that uh, watermelon um, in the grapefruit in the cantaloupe and also uh, peaches. So in this, you have to really uh, concern. You have to really concern about the fluid. You said so much again. Like pause. 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 Are stubborn. Yes. So you were talking about about the about the fruits that how much quantity of fluid is in the fruits and how much the chronic liver disease patient fluid should take. You can throw some light on. Yes. Uh, so if just the only thing you please speak loudly. Yes, So if just now I was talking about the fruits, now I'll be explaining to you. Um, I'll be giving examples of what kind of vegetables that has a very high content of water. So the first example that I want to give is that the cucumber and also the lettuce and also the um, zucchini and also radish and also tomato. These these fruits that I've given as examples 
contain very high tank uh, of water. water yes and also um, the drinks it, um, those people that have uh, chronic liver disease they can drink uh, water but they have my so should we then if somebody you see we, we, we are making that the only fluid should be taken around around 800 800 ml then if somebody is taking fruit or anything then we have to count this water also you mean yes you have to you have to measure the it is it is to be water. measured so there should be a measuring measuring device or measuring pot in which the fruit juice is put or something is put then you know how how much ml it contains yes a chart is to be made rather the intake chart and output chart what fluid is being taken in and what how much fluid is being taken out that can also be done yes so the last point is that i want to explain is that people with anasaka as the sir and my friend described this now should have to intake less than 800 ml this my yes, that is what i was saying less than 800 ml yes. you see actually is some people who got a, who got who got a fluid too much of fluid now they feel thirsty if they feel thirsty and you are you are resting with the fluid then it becomes a problem isn't it now how to overcome that problem that problem i think can be overcome very easily you give some you give some for example ice cream or you 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 give some what is called as the ice simple ice what what is in the freezer and all that those cubes are there you just tell him put some one ice here it will it will quench his thirst also and it won't give too much of fluid also or if somebody has got a if somebody takes little bit of feel is thirsty and he cannot take 100 ml water he can't take 200 ml of water because there is fluid restriction so we can tell him okay take one ice cream little bit of ice cream then ice cream will quench his thirst as well as it will give some nutrition also so we can do that also uh, to our patients is it yes yes so with this uh, we have completed the requirement of proteins carbohydrates right and uh, the requirement of fluid in case of chronic liver diseases now i think we are left with the the requirement of fat so maybe that we will do in the next session right now it is the deepavali which is which is which is the deepavali people are celebrating here deepavali and it is some malaysia the is giving the deepavali holiday here right so let the people come from the deepavali who so ever is left with with those uh, topics then we can have a, another get together and we can discuss on those on those things yes right so i thank you i thank you for all right and i thank you for your cooperation and efforts and thanks and uh, god bless you thank you so much thank you yeah. sir